A warm welcome to this talk. It's Wednesday the 24th of April. Now we're going to be looking at the use of midazolam in the United Kingdom. And it looks like a lot of people died as a direct result of being given midazolam. Now if this is the case, that means that Covid killed far fewer people than we thought and midazolam killed way more people than we thought. This really couldn't be more serious Let's hope there's not a massive scandal of international proportions about to break onto the scene. Now, let's give you the evidence for this rather than just me talking about it. Here we have this paper here. This is what we're going to be looking at. So the paper is entitled Excess Deaths in the United Kingdom, Medazolam and Euthanasia in the COVID-19 Pandemic. This is the link. Medical and Clinical Research, it's in the, this is the journal. And just to give you the citation for this, it's really important material. Uh, Medazolam and Euthanasia in the COVID-19 pandemic, and it's published in Medical and Clinical Research, peer-reviewed journal article, check it out for yourself. Now, what the authors did, macro data during the COVID-19 pandemic in the United Kingdom are shown to have significant data anomalies and inconsistencies with the existing explanations. This paper contends that the existing explanations of death, i.e. that a lot of people died from COVID, is simply wrong. People did die from COVID, but fewer than the official statistics are indicating is the argument of this paper. England in 2020... In the UK, there was a spike in deaths. Now, I'm going to show you a few graphics uh, in a minute. Just, but I'll go through the text first. So, uh, UK spike in deaths wrongly attributed to COVID-19 in April 2020. Wrongly attributed. This gave the impression that COVID was a much more dangerous disease than it actually was. And we based a lot of our thinking at the time on this inaccurate data that the government simply didn't correct for us. Let's just stick to what's in the paper. Wrongly attributed, uh, wrongly, wrongly attributed to COVID-19 in April 2020 was not due to SARS coronavirus 2 virus, according to this paper. These are direct quotes from the paper which was largely absent at that time, so the virus was largely absent, therefore it couldn't have been causing the deaths, but was due to the widespread use of midazolam injections, benzodiazepine sedative. Not only that, I know from talking to a lot of colleagues and some former students that it was often given with midazolam, which was the government guideline at the time. Morphine and midazolam given together will basically stop you breathing not this is not a esoteric pharmacology this is well known in in healthcare uh, provision uh, which were statistically very highly correlated coefficient over 90 percent with excess deaths in all regions of england during 2020 and as we'll see all regions of the uk uh, as well importantly excess deaths remain elevated following mass vaccination in 2021 so this is arguing that excess deaths remained high following the rollout of the mass vaccination campaign, indicating that the mass vaccination campaign was nowhere near as effective as the government were uh, indicating at the time. But was statistically uncorrelated to COVID injections. And when he says COVID injections, they mean, of course, the... Uh, so-called vaccinations, while remaining significantly correlated to midazolam injections. So these excess deaths were not uh, were, were statistically uncorrelated to the COVID vaccines, but remain, remain significantly correlated to midazolam injections. The widespread and persistent use of midazolam in the UK suggests a possible policy of systemic euthanasia. Now, these are not my words. These are direct from the paper. You may think they're rather strong words, but we'll see it's based on very good graphical evidence that I'm about to give you. Um, this really is a, a massive piece of news. 
Unlike Australia, where assessing the statistical impact of COVID injections on excess deaths was relatively straightforward, UK excess deaths were closely associated with the use of midazolam and other medical interventions such as morphine. And of course, we know that people that were ventilated didn't do very well as well. Uh, the UK iatrogenic pandemic. Iatrogenic means caused by medical treatment. So were these deaths largely caused by iatrogenesis? Certainly a lot of them were. Um, was it an iatrogenic pandemic as opposed to a COVID pandemic that was killing the majority of people? We must have answers to this. This couldn't be more important. We're talking about the lives of thousands of people. And I know from heartbreaking um, comments and uh, discussions, uh, many of those were relatives, friends, loved ones, family members. Caused by euthanasia deaths from midazolam and also likely caused by COVID injections, according to this paper. So the iatrogenic pandemic caused by medical treatment in the UK Two causes, euthanasia, deaths from midazolam, according to this paper, and likely, likely caused by COVID injections. What do you call COVID injections? But their relative impacts are difficult to measure from the data due to the causal proximity of euthanasia. In other words, these things are happening at roughly the same time, so it's hard to pick apart what was the COVID injections and what was the midazolam injections. Both, of course, equally bad because the patient ended up no longer with us. Global investigation of COVID-19 epidemiology based only on the relative impacts of COVID disease and vaccination may be inaccurate due to the, neg due to the ne neglect of significant confounding factors in some countries. Um, let me know what countries the author is probably uh, referring to here. Let's just look at a few uh, graphics that illustrate this. So here we have um, here we have a uh, UK monthly all cause total deaths. Now the green here is monthly all cause total deaths. That's in the green, and um, what we have in the red is the level of excess deaths. So we can see the excess deaths here and the total deaths there. No question about the. Uh, uh, the excess deaths, of course, quite uh, obvious. UK monthly excess deaths, baseline and sigma. Now, the sigma here is the um, sigma is the standard deviations. So basically, if something's two standard deviations, two, two sigma, that, that's counted as being significant uh, in terms of statistics. If something is five sigma, that's five standard deviations away from the observation we would expect, the chances of that happening are one in 3.5 million. So five sigma is one chance in 3.5 million. And that's that you might remember that's how they worked out that the Higgs boson existed because it was it reached the five sigma level of significance. So that's that, that's the standard used in physics. And of course, we're talking about life science here, which is. Um, um, well, we, we, we often work on much, much lower levels of significance than one in 3.5 million. Um, so there are the excess deaths there and we see the monthly sigma. So there we see anything above. So that's the two line there. <coughs> so anything above that line is significant. Anything above the five sigma line, which is about there, the chances of this happening are one in 3.5 million. So we can see that this probably reaches to here and this most certainly does. In fact, this goes up to almost uh, what, 90, nearly 20 sigma. Uh, quite mind blowing, really. Uh, now, this is UK monthly new COVID cases. So new COVID cases here in green and monthly new COVID deaths, all in thousands, of course. So what we're looking at here. So look at this line here. So the, this is the level of COVID here. And this is the level of deaths. Now, if this is accurate, this gives an infection fatality rate of 24.3%. And we know that COVID is nothing like as deadly as that. These people seem to be mostly dying or correlates with the administration of uh, midazolam. Again, um, monthly new COVID deaths in red here. And uh, monthly new cases, 
relatively low. And here we see um, monthly new cases here, but uh, monthly new COVID deaths being remarkably low. Infection fatality rate of only 0.18. So we see clear and strong correlations between excess deaths in 2020 and very low levels of COVID infections at the time when midazolam was being given out um, with less caution than we would like to, I would like to have seen. Uh, now, this is, uh, now the lead time here seems to be about five months. Uh, this is monthly COVID injections here. And this is the excess mortality. So if we take, if we take, if we take these two peaks here, so these are monthly COVID injections. And then five months later, there's a, a peak in uh, excess deaths. And again, we can correlate the excess deaths uh, with the COVID injections. Doesn't mean to say it's causal, of course, but this merits an answer. The correlations are accurate. And of course, very often, correlation is associated with causality. This is the uh, prescriptions from Adazolam according to openprescribing.net. So we see they peaked up. These are the different regions of England. So everywhere is giving out a lot of Adazolam at this time. And again, later on uh, in uh, 2021. UK monthly excess mortality by region. So we see that this was happening across the regions of the UK is basically the point of that slide. UK, England monthly midazolam injections and deaths. Now here we see the midazolam injections in green and we see the excess deaths in red. In thousands, of course. So the... Lead time there, so we see the great increase in the amount of uh, midazolam given in green, followed by the uh, deaths very closely after that in red. We see it there very clearly. We see it here very clearly. The deaths slightly after the midazolam increase. Again, we see it here. Again, we see it here. But there is a very tight correlation. Now, of course, patients may be on midazolam for a few days uh, before they uh, stop breathing. So it's not surprising there's some delay. And prescription aren't, prescriptions aren't always given straight away either. Um, but that correlation there is uh, very, very tight indeed. Remember, green is midazolam injections. Red is monthly excess deaths if anyone says to you that those two peaks those two peaks there are not worthy of investigation how much tight does it have to, tight does it have to be to be worthy worthy of investigation it's they are very close indeed Uh, this is for the that was for England alone. This is the you. This is for um, the UK as a whole. Again, uh, midazolam injections in green. I mean, look how tight those correlations are. Midazolam injections in green. Excess deaths in red. Uh, these are questions that need to be answered. Very tight correlations between midazolam use and excess deaths. That was the situation in London. Again, it's the same. The monthly midazolam injections and the excess deaths very closely correlated. That was the situation in uh, Northwest. That's the situation in Southwest. That's the situation in uh, in uh, England. And, and here, here we see here here we see the monthly excess deaths in thousands up there. Monthly new midazolam doses there in April 2020. I mean, wow, what a difference. This is where it kind of was before 2020 down there. But here uh, we see very high excess deaths being correlated with excess midazolam use. So 
not a proud day to be British, really. Um, we need more studies on this, of course, uh, but we also need answers. And this is something that um, mainstream media and government really should address as a matter of urgency. When I saw those correlations, I was reminded of the um, thalidomide, where we had the increase in thalidomide and, of course, the birth defects exactly nine months later. An example where correlation did mean causality. Thank you for watching.